three years later, I've got some really good news. Miles, you're going to go totally blind. It's a genetic hereditary eyesight disease. It jumped many generations, hit me and my brother Jeffrey. Now I was seriously disappointed. One of my friends came along to encourage me. Miles, I've heard this disastrous news that you're going to go totally blind. It's probably the worst thing that could happen to anybody in the whole wide world. And it's up to you. And I thought, I'm so pleased I've got friends like you. <laughs> I could never be happy or fulfilled or successful because of my blindness. I thought that my happiness, my quality of life, had to be based on nice things happening around me. And everyone told me, society told me, blindness, disability, it's a barrier, it's a handicap. The world today thinks that anyone with any sort of a disability naturally, obviously, has to have a lower quality of life than other people. And I want to tell you, rubbish! You know? <laughs> Your quality of life is not based on things around you which you cannot control. It's based on here, your attitude, your response. And what I love about Variety International, you guys are trying to tell societies and countries around the world, listen, give these people a chance, no matter what their disability, what they've got wrong with them. There's a quality of life there, if only they will have the chance and, and to get out there. So, what changed my life was at the age of 50, all these things I'll be talking about is only since the age of 50, that's when I woke up. And what gave me a new sort of start in that was actually my brother. Have we got that up on the screen? Yes. Is yes. the screen here? No. no. Yes. no. no. So, okay. It's obvious that I'm lying, isn't it? Blah, blah, blah. blah, blah. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. so, so, when I was 50, my brother, he, he now lives in Durban in South Africa. His name is Jeff, also totally blind. He built this boat in his back garden by field. Now, if you want a stupid hobby that makes no sense for a blind man, building a boat in the back garden, you know? <laughs> what does he think he is? No, or something like that. So anyway, he launches it and it doesn't sink. Isn't that amazing? And people are saying, it's built by a blind man, it's still floating, it's still floating. So after a while they said, it's not going to sink. What are you going to do now? My brother Jeffrey said, I'm going to sail that from Africa to Australia, Durban to Fremantle, all by myself. Nobody else on board, no backup ships following in the Southern Ocean. His friend said, Jeffrey, don't you understand? It is impossible for a blind man to sail across an ocean solo, all by yourself. You're not just a blind man, you're a stupid blind man. <laughs> but my brother said, no, it's not impossible. It's just never been done before. I want to share with you today some life principles, life lessons that have totally transformed my life. Number one, many things in life are not impossible. They've just never been done before. You guys, some of you in small tents around the world struggling a bit, not impossible, just hasn't been done before. You know, your ability to just do amazing things, it's just different. Big thing, stop following the herd. Stop doing things the way the rest of the world does. If you follow the herd, you'll just end up being mooked. Do you understand that? <laughs> so, we've got to think out of the box, and that's why I'm so impressed, you know, I only met Clark yesterday, I think, or whatever, and listening to him, He's got such a beautiful, dynamic vision. You've got a thing out of the box. You've got loads of charities chasing money around the world. You guys, when you think different, anything can happen. So, my brother set sail from Durban, in South Africa. 53 days later, he reaches Fremantle. Okay, he nearly drowned. Five days in a forced ten gale. 35 foot waves crashing down in him, blowing him towards that cloud here. But he made it. So, I now live in England, Derby in England. So, I flew to Australia, Fremantle. Famous um, photograph, two blind adventurers kicking out glasses of beer, looking at the camera. But when people see the photograph, one glass is here, the other one's <laughs> there like that, so looking really stupid. It's really hard to be a, a poser when you're silly blind tricks. My kids keep on warning me, Dad, stop the posing, you look so embarrassing, but you know, parents' job is to embarrass your kids, isn't that right? So anyway, so my brother taught me a very important lesson. He says, Miles, the trouble with you is not your blindness, it's your attitude. Because all the time you're thinking, what can a blind man do? What can a blind man do? All the time I was thinking, I'm blind, my circumstances are negative, they're limited, therefore I can't do anything. You beautiful people, big thing to say to you, do not focus on your circumstances, what happened last year, how much money you raised, all the problems, the economy, blah, blah, blah. Forget about all of that rubbish. Start with your goals, your dreams, what you want to achieve. My brother said, stop focusing, thinking, as a blind man, what can a blind man do? Start with what you want to do, and then work down. So now, what has transformed my life is I start with a big dream. 
Bill often saying earlier, you've got to dream big. The bigger the dreams, you know, what is the point in having a small little dream in Brooklyn Math Box, you know, and expecting to do something great? It's pathetic. So, I went back to England and thought, okay, I'm going to start with my dream. I want to be a pilot, so I'm going to be a pilot. Then I thought, whoops, blind people, you know. And in fact, I didn't know of any blind people who were pilots. So, I thought my eyes don't work, but my ears are okay, so maybe I can fly using my ears. So I thought all of that information the pilots have, because all commercial pilots have to learn to fly blind on instrument to qualify. And I thought, I'm blind, I'm half qualified. <laughs> <laughs> so what I have to think is that information that people look at with their eyes, if I could get it maybe through a computer and speech output into my ears, then I could be a pilot. So I started researching on Google for all the people in the world making flight instruments for blind pilots. Zero, you know. We <laughs> direct research. So anyway, it's a good niche market in one way to make for anyway. So there's at least 850 kids who went in blind, two, three-year-olds, coming out, whoa, see what a motor car looks like. So, you know, Imagine sitting there and a little Indian child, two and a half years old, a little girl, she's got bandages on, having them taken off, she's had both eyes done. She looks up and says, looks at her mummy and says, so mummy, that's what you look like. Isn't that amazing? Aww. What an incredible thing, you know, just so heart-wrenching. Thousands and thousands of children, all they need is 25 pounds and that's what it is. So anyway, wonderful experience for me actually being there. Um, I didn't do any operations, by the way, I just watched. So, um, yeah, so, yeah, so, I'll anyway, stay, stay there. So, um, realize the air you need, it's not 130 foot up there, it's on your back, stupid. That's why you've got that thing in your mouth. So, he said the word for fear in English, F-E-A-R, it stands for false evidence appearing real. Listen, in your head, not just in mine, yours as well, false evidence here appearing real, stopping you from doing things. Many of you listening to me this morning have got fears, focus, things you'd love to do, but no, 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 things might go wrong, blah, blah, blah. Listen, it's just wrong thinking. Change the way you think, and you can do almost anything. So, one of the things that scared me a bit recently, I decided to be a drag racer. So, of course, my people don't normally do drag racing. So, this is Santa Pod in, in the UK. Now, this is only a little Honda Civic, but it is a Type R, which means it's a two-liter engine. This chap gets over 800 horsepower out of a two-liter engine. So this baby does naught to 150 mile an hour in around 10 seconds. And I was going to drive it, six feet manual box. He says, blind man, keep away from my car. We're going to crash. So I said, no, I've got an idea. So remember, I started with my dreams, what I want to do, make a decision. Step three is, whoops, how can a blind man do it? So I thought, all I've got to do is drive straight in a line, and then I can drive. So we went to a disused airport runway in the UK, and I said, OK, I'm going to drive down the middle of this runway. As long as I'm in the middle, let's imagine it's a 100 meter athletic track. So you sit next to me in your fancy little toy that you're worried about. And as long as I'm in the middle, you say, that's track number five. So you keep on shouting, five, 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 I'm in the middle. I go up to the right, six, 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 we get right near the edge. Nine, nine, nine. So <laughs> that's how we did it. So here I am, I'm feeling confident. We've got it all sorted. But I had to get clearance. So, over the PA system, the idiot tells everybody, ladies and gentlemen, this is, you know, the, the, the European championships. For the first time in world history, we've got a blind, I said again, a blind driver coming down the track. <laughs> he said, get out of the way, lock up the door. <laughs> oh, 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 you know, made me really nervous, so I said to Guy, my friend, I need the toilet. So, go we go to the toilet, all these little urinals against the wall. So, I'm having a pee in the urinal, Guy from the other end shouts, Miles, three. As I came out of the toilet, he hit his head and said, I can't believe it, stupid idiot, can't even pee into a toilet, we are going to crash. And I said, no, no, I was nervous to all the crowd, you see, so I, I wound up the window and I pretended it was like, we have opportunities, but we're so resistant to saying yes to new things. I believe that life is full of green lights, you know, like traffic lights. But most of us are colorblind. There's opportunities that come your way in life. And what do you do? Oh, you know, you've been worried. Oh, no, not me, you know. And we pass them by. So for me, I knew it wasn't going to be a fast race. In fact, it took me over six hours. But you know what? I was raising money for blind kids in the developing world. Every 200 yards that I ran, that was another blind child receiving his sight. So at the end of the race, 240 children could get their sight even though, yes, thank you very much, thank you. What is more important, 
the pride of blind adventure Miles Hilton and Barber, you know, being bruised very badly, it's taking over six hours to run a marathon, which is horrible, or the fact that I raised money for these kids. These 240 children will never meet me. I'll never meet them. You know what? They don't care but if it took me six days, six weeks, six years. All they know is now they can see what their mummy looks like. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. International. There's times you're going to work long hours, you know what? You will actually never meet the people often who benefit from your very hard work. When you're working late at night, keep in mind, you know, it's not you're not making disposable Coca-Cola cups you use once and throw them away. You guys are investing your life in changing, giving people life itself. Some people won't even live without your help, but a quality of life, you see. And I'm an example of someone whose life has been transformed. When I first went blind, I believed the rubbish that blind people couldn't do anything. Very often the people that you help in. Sometimes society says, oh no, it's not worth investing in this child, this girl, little boy. They'll never talk, they'll never walk. Don't listen to that rubbish, you know. It's not impossible if there's the, 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 the heart, if you can inculcate into the child and the parents that there's that potential, anything can happen. 